walking in the woods as a human, there is a background awareness that I am an outsider passing through. Coming into contact with a well-established natural order and possibly disturbing it. It can feel as if these places have existed undisturbed, untouched, since the beginning of time. Which is why it can feel so surprising and exciting to find something, some relic of the past. It can also be incredibly depressing to be pulled out of this meditation because you're suddenly standing in a dumping ground. But it is also possible to come across something extraordinary. The first time I saw the culverts underneath the rail trail in East Hardwick, I was completely awestruck by their grandeur. It seemed completely impossible that something so significant and huge could have been made out here in the woods. And I realized that the entire hillside above these culverts had also been constructed by people. How this could have been possible in a time long before modern machinery boggled my mind. Stepping inside for the first time, one might have to summon some courage. These massive slabs of granite were placed here more than 150 years ago, and the absolutely enormous pressure and weight they contain is palpable. It's as if the very air around them is being weighed down by this vast tonnage. I like being in a space like this. It can feel like stepping through a portal. I could blink. And when I open my eyes, be 100 years in the past or the future and hardly know the difference. Another world outside. But here, these same stones unmoved. The same water passing through. I find this incredibly comforting. This first experience made a powerful impression that gradually began to fade. Until some months later, opening a book and being sucked in to that not-so-distant past when a stone-cutting empire had risen so quickly, decades before combustible engines would begin powering the future. A valuable resource had been discovered in New England, and thousands would flock there for jobs, 
forever changing the face of the Green Mountain State. And who were these people, these hardened souls, who traveled thousands of miles to cut and move stone? Were they driven by the idea of progress, of paving the way for a better future? The railroad would connect them to the world. Looking through historical documents, there is evidence that indeed, the men who labored building the railroad must have felt a profound sense of purpose for the work they were doing garnered a universal level of excitement and appreciation, unparalleled by anything we can imagine today. On July 4th, 1849, the first train chuffed into Montpelier, and a conductor later recalled that momentous occasion. Well, I do remember the interest manifested in a commotion created among the people who came in from the surrounding country to see the first trains in Montpelier. The town was packed and we were compelled to send men in advance to clear the way for the train. Every building which cars could be seen was covered. Every available window occupied. The tops of buildings were covered if possible and even those treetops were alive with people. Construction was continuing, and an interesting contest was shaping up during the summer of 1877. The Lamoille Valley Railroad crew was building towards Cambridge at the same time as the crew of the Burlington and Lamoille Railroad. Bets were being made on which crew would arrive in Cambridge first, and the race was going to be a close one. As it turned out, both railroads arrived in town on the same day. The Burlington crew was first by a matter of hours. Incredible to think. These builders weren't simply laying track as they raced to the finish line, but all along the way, raising monumental structures designed to last hundreds, if not thousands, of years. Among the most breathtaking examples is the Morrow Brook Culvert. Heading down south from Keene Road in Walden, there comes a point on the rail trail where one is suddenly very high from either side. It took me some time to conceptualize the transformation of this place. That right here, a towering wooden structure had been built trestle, 200 feet high and 500 feet long, and strong enough to carry the train over it, which would then begin dumping loads of gravel and stone to make it the earthen mound it is today. And of course, 
course far below, carrying the swift waters of the moral brook through, is a most magnificent culvert. The first time I saw it, I really, really could not believe my eyes. Okay, so I just arrived at the Moral Brook Culvert for the first time in Walden, Vermont. And I just can't believe what I'm seeing. It's, it's just, it looks like something that would be in Europe, like Rome or something. It's huge. It's like I, I'd seen this little picture in this history book that was black and white. And I was imagining something that was like maybe eight foot tall. But this thing is like 20 feet high. It's, and it's just out in the middle of the woods. Where the Morrow Brook enters from the north, there are two towering concrete slabs, angled far outward like a gaping mouth, poised as if ready to consume a deluge of biblical proportions. This is the only part of the culvert where concrete was used, and likewise that which shows obvious signs of wear. Peering inside, it is astonishing to see the perfect archway stretching off impossibly far in the distance. Every stone so exact, suspended as if by magic. I imagine the wooden form being moved along as it was used to place them and hold them until each keystone was inserted, locking it all into place. The outlet is straddled by a multitude of giant slabs, piled in a pyramid shape, facing directly outward, bracing against the structure, as if to counter the opposing force of the brook, subtly pushing against it, preventing erosion. Epic monuments hidden under the rail trail are a reminder of what the railroad once meant, of the profound transformation that once occurred, and the value of connection, a purpose that it will continue to serve for years to come. <laughs> 